everyone, I'm Allison Hayslip. I'm here with William Quigley, the CEO of Wax and Opskins. And uh, William, you're gonna tell us all a little bit about what's going on here these yes. days. I just got a chance to check out your office space here. It's really wonderful. Glad uh, you like it. Yeah. yeah, we like being in downtown Santa Monica. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> that's a nice life. So just for everyone at home, what is Wax? So Wax is uh, the Worldwide Asset Exchange. And for those of you who are listening, I'm sure many of you know that Wax is also a token. Today it's an ERC-20 token, soon to be its own token based on the EOS platform. And Wax does a whole bunch of cool stuff if you're interested in virtual item creation or virtual item trading or blockchain-based games. We provide a suite of services for that industry. Right, now clearly cryptocurrency is a very big buzzword yep. these days. I feel like everyone and their mother learned about what it was over the holidays when the price yeah. of Bitcoin was jumping all over the place. $20,000. Yeah, I know, yeah. everyone was like, we're gonna be rich. But you guys have obviously taken it and, and you're, you have a very practical application. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to people just like throwing some money online and being like, oh, I've made money somehow. So can right. you talk specifically about what you guys are doing? Sure. Yeah. Sure. So uh, a lot of what I'll say will be really germane to people who are virtual item traders, virtual items, uh, objects within a video game that people use in the game or they trade with others, there's virtual item collectors. Right. That's a giant industry, probably yeah. $50 billion or so, just in the secondary market of trading. <laughs> and close to $100 billion every year of uh, people buying those items from the video game publishers. So Opskins, a company the uh, founders of Wax uh, created, Opskins is a virtual item marketplace. But over time, we realized that there were benefits of using a blockchain in what we do, and those benefits are really packaged and called Wax. Nice, and what do you, where do you envision Wax going? Yeah, so ultimately, uh, WAX has, uh, I'd say, the grand vision. The grand vision of WAX is that it is a global platform that is virtual item centric. Think of it like the Apple App Store mm -hmm. or the Google Play Store, but in those stores, the center of the activity is based on the app, the app publisher. What's different about WAX is for us, the virtual item is at the center. And then from that, everything else happens. Where again, if you're in Google Play, you download an app. And then people who wanna do something with that app, do it. With, with WAX, we think virtual items are so important, they deserve their own platform where anyone who wants to do anything with the items can do them. Right, and clearly, you know, anyone who plays video games is very specific about how they play, what they want to do within the game. Yes. And I feel like a lot of people don't realize that the video game industry itself is the only industry that never drops. It's always on a constant incline in terms of yes. how many people are getting involved, what kind of money that's getting thrown into it. Yeah, it shifts. Yeah. Uh, uh, the thing that's interesting about the video game industry, on the one hand, you could say, uh, it's hits driven, which is true, right. right? But yes, overall, it's been growing and continuing to grow. Yeah. It's actually incredibly stable. Yeah. Uh, you never see it plummet 50%, Never. but people change out the games and the items that they use. Right, exactly. Okay, so let's talk a bit about Wax Express Trade because this is a newer, yes. a newer project you're taking yes. on, right? Yes, so um, at the core of virtual items, when you're in a video game, most people, what they want to do is they want to trade them. Now, as it turns out, the majority of video games today, the publishers restrict your ability to trade them. Right. You can buy them, you can collect them, but they don't like the trading. And we could get into a whole topic about why some video game creators like trading and some don't. But to the extent that items are tradable, then that's where groups like Wax come along. We make it easy for people to trade them because these game items are very easily stolen, right? There are also many of them. You need to have one central place you can, you can access all of yours, one center of all of your inventory. And then you need to be able to figure out what you want to trade with what, right? right. So, Wax Express Trade is a, on, on one level, it's a inventory system. Think of it from the crypto world, we would call it a wallet. Right. So it's a place where all your virtual items get stored. 
but it's also a place where you can see what other people have and make trade offers to them. And then ultimately, if you would like to sell your item, sell it for other cryptocurrencies or sell it for some form of fiat, US dollars, euros, RMB, then you would send that to a marketplace like Opskins. And you can do that today. You can take your wax item, send it to Opskins and immediately sell it. Opskins is like the uh, it's like an eBay for virtual goods. Well, it must be exciting to be at the forefront of such a uh you know, it, it feels like blockchain and cryptocurrency and all this kind of, you know, in-game trading is is really something that's going to be massive. And, I mean, it's already massive now, but it's something that's going to change the way we do any sort of business. Yeah, it is. And, and again, in these settings, there's not time to discuss all of what I see happening. But uh, uh, video gaming and trading of virtual items, that is a ideal application for the blockchain. Mm -hmm. We've proven it. Uh, right now, we have created uh, you know, the Wax Express trade specifically to enable uh, virtual items uh, to be traded easily at very low cost, uh, conveniently. Uh, you know, today, the state of blockchain-based gaming, it's got a great future. But as it stands today, it's awful. <laughs> it's just awful. And, and the reason it's awful is because the primary way people are creating items and they're trading them is with this standard I referred to before called the ERC-721. Right. And it, is a, it was a great attempt. Uh, the Ethereum developers get a lot of credit for creating a token that will allow you to have a unique item, right? Each ERC-721 is unique. The problem is trying to trade that on the Ethereum main chain, main net doesn't work. Uh, it, it, it gets too crowded, uh, everything grinds to a halt. Uh, you might remember when CryptoKitties came out. Mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a disaster for anybody trying to get anything done on the Ethereum chain. Now imagine thousands of CryptoKitty type things. Yeah. And then of course I also mentioned what happened to us a couple of weeks ago with one random company doing a promotion on Ethereum. Uh, you went from 50 cents to $50 to create a smart contract. Uh, so at this point, the, uh, the Ethereum blockchain is not suited for trading massive quantities of items. And the way you interface with the Ethereum chain, if you want to play these uh, blockchain-based video games, is with something called MetaMask. Now, again, it was a nice attempt, but it's it's... From the vantage point of billions of items traded, hundreds of millions of consumers using it, MetaMask is a non-starter. Mm -hmm. It is a, a terribly difficult way to interface with the blockchain. It's also slow, it's insecure. It's built as a, uh, a Google Chrome extension. One of the scariest things to, uh, uh, to say if you're talking about cryptocurrencies right. because it's, it's inherently unsafe. So uh, if, uh, if someone watching this were to try to download MetaMask, buy an ERC-721 with Ethereum, uh, actually acquire that item and then trade it. I would be shocked if they could do that in less than 30 minutes. And if they were doing it in 30 minutes, I think that's because they were pretty darn smart about Ethereum and about virtual item trading. Um, with Wax Express Trade, it's really as easy as using any app on an app store to buy a virtual item and send it as a gift or, or a trade, which many, many people do. You've made it accessible. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, and we talked about this when we were on our uh, when our, we were on the Wax Roadshow last year. We said we believe that virtual item trading is the on ramp to mass adoption of blockchain based things and mass consumer adoption mm -hmm. of cryptocurrencies, uh, crypto based items, and blockchain. And and I think we're we're seeing that the number of transactions that are taking place with Vigo, for instance, make it the top DAP distributed application um, on Ethereum. So and this is a, this is a, a virtual item that was created a few weeks ago. Right. So very very quickly it's happened. It's happened because it's an item people want. It's priced at the right price points. But the other reason is because it's so easy to use. And, uh, you know, I've been doing consumer 
consumer product investing and company building for 25 years. And uh, I always say I pray to the God of convenience. Everything with consumer has to be about convenience. And blockchain and cryptos today are not very convenient. No. And, and give us a little bit more time, but I would say in the next year or so, you will see many, many ways for consumers to use blockchain. That's a substantial improvement to where we are today. Right. With, with uh, Wax Express Trade really leading that. Right. It seems like you, your company is specifically trying to bypass the growing pains of yep. cryptocurrency and blockchains becoming an everyday process for people. Yes, particularly since there are so many companies now, uh, game developers, who want to build blockchain-based right. games. Right. And uh, uh, many of those come to us and say, hey, we would like to trade our items on, on Wax Express Trade. And, and that's because it's a far better way to do it than, than MetaMask. Uh, but we also know a lot about trading virtual items. Uh, we have been doing this for 20 years. So we understand what the, the user behaviors are. Uh, by the way, it's probably no surprise, most people would prefer to not to have to buy uh, Ethereum or Bitcoin in order to use something. Right. Because it's hard. It's hard to buy it, it's hard to, to spend it. It takes sometimes 10 minutes, sometimes an hour for your Bitcoin confirmation to go through. And uh, if there's a lot of transactions as there were on the Ethereum blockchain uh, a couple weeks ago, it takes 17 hours to multiple days. So that's not the way we're gonna hit mass market adoption of, uh, of blockchain-based businesses. It's gonna come from allowing people to use fiat, which you can do mm -hmm. uh, in the WAX ecosystem, and uh, allowing people to very easily trade something without getting bogged down by a slow mainnet. Right. Okay, so what kind of ecosystem are you looking to create with WAX? Uh, I'm glad you asked that question yeah. because virtual item trading is a massive ecosystem. Right. I, it, at, at its base level, you have got hundreds of millions of people who own these virtual items. Originally, they came from video games and now they're coming from the blockchain. Mm -hmm. They got them, uh, they started wanting to collect them, and then they maybe coveted the other guy's stuff. So you always said, do. You all, yeah, <laughs> hey, can I trade yours yeah. for mine, right? And then along came companies like Opskins that said, well, maybe you would like to trade it for cash. Right. And many, many different currencies. So let's, let me give you a, a, a highlight of, uh, of the ecosystem. It is. It is actually quite surprising to most people when they understand how vast it is. So uh, virtual item trading, there are tens of thousands of companies across the world that facilitate it. There's companies like Opskins. Opskins is a marketplace, as I mentioned, it's like an eBay for virtual items. You can go on, you can, if you're a seller, you can showcase your item. Uh, people can look at it uh, in a three-dimensional model and they can buy it. They can buy it with cryptocurrencies, they can buy it with fiat currencies. And what's fascinating is they're buying it from people all over the world. Uh, you've also got people who arbitrage. So these are people who don't necessarily want to own the item, but they do want to make a profit when people want to buy it you know, or sell it. Right. And so they facilitate the liquidity of that market because they're constantly looking and seeing are there prices that they think are out of alignment. And if they're too high, they're selling. If they're too low, they're buying. Right. And so these, these arbitrageurs really help lubricate the, the liquidity in that market. And you see something very similar, of course, in Bitcoin and, and, and cryptocurrencies in general with uh, uh, crypto exchanges, thousands of crypto exchanges, where some people want to use the tokens, but often people simply want to um, invest in them, right? And some of those are, are formally what you would call arbitrageurs. Then there are many thousands of sites that provide what I would call information. They're, uh, they're media sites, they're uh, fan sites. They talk about uh, why a particular type of item is important or coveted. Mm -hmm. uh, these range from simple blogs to full-on large, you know, well-produced uh, uh, content sites. So the reviews. Yes, reviews. They have uh, lots of fans who who share what they've been doing with them. Uh, so you have uh, uh, 
all of these businesses and people coming together, each trying to do what they want to do, but in the end, you would summarize that and you would call it an ecosystem where there's a thriving economy that allows people who either want to uh, make virtual items because they have a game, uh, people want to acquire them because they're fans, they want to trade them, mm -hmm. uh, or they would just like to run a side business. And so uh, um, we, of course, my team started out as Opskins, and we were doing that for a number of different uh, uh, well-traded virtual items. And then uh, with Wax, we said, well, let's bring the blockchain and the advantages of the blockchain to this. And maybe in another episode, we'll talk about uh, you know, where a blockchain is useful and where it is not. It's not, it's not useful for every single thing. Right. Uh, but for certain activities you do with virtual item trading, there's nothing better than a blockchain-based solution, mm -hmm. which is what Wax is helping to build out. Nice. Well, thank you for your time, William. This has been, I feel like I have learned so much sitting on the couch from you in 20 minutes about this industry than I have just like reading anything I could ever find online. You clearly okay. know what you're doing here. <laughs> We've been doing it for a long time. Yes. Thank you. Awesome. Well, this was wonderful. Thank, thank you. And bye I hope bye. that helped all you out there too.